Hi everyone, my name's Steve and this is Little Plastic People and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at painting an Imperial Knight base but this same process can be applied to any base of your choice and it is very much a process I don't intend this to be a recipe as you'll see I make a lot of changes and missteps along the way but I'm going to leave all of these in just to demonstrate that it really doesn't matter you just need to keep painting particularly with a subject that's so forgiving like a base but with that said, I do think that we should spend a little bit more time with our bases. It does really help to frame a miniature and make an army feel a lot more cohesive. Anyways, let's get to the video. Okay, so I need to base this lanky knight before salute, but I still want it to remain cohesive with the rest of my knights. I'm not going to go for anything identical, but close enough so that this and any other additions in the future aren't going to stand out. Problem is, I don't remember how I painted the other bases, so this is going to be a bit of an exploration. First things first, I've given the base a solid coat of good quality black primer, going a little heavy to keep everything all stuck together. The base texture was made of tree bark, sand, texture paste and some small rocks, all simply super glued in place, although I may have used some hot glue for the larger pieces of bark. Next up is a coat of German red brown, another primer, but you don't have to double up really, I just like the colour and thought an extra layer wouldn't hurt and might help to keep everything stuck down. I've used the airbrush here and we'll use it here and there throughout the video but pretty much everything that we're going to do with this base could be done without one. Just using it for speed and efficiency so hang around. Now you can see here I've spotted a rough patch on the base rim so I give it a quick scrape and a sand before moving on. Once dry I pick up some deep brown from AK and a large brush liberally applying the paint without going too far into the deepest recesses. In an attempt to get as close to the previous bases, I grab a few pale stone colours from the rack and start applying them to the base. First up is cork by AK, applied with an overbrush, which is essentially a heavy and slightly wet dry brush. I give this a thin wash of brown ink and flow improver, along with some of my purple ink mix just to smooth things out and give it some very initial interest. Although I kind of know at this point that most of this will get covered up later. I go back to the cork, but this time apply it with a sponge so that we get some texture while also catching all those raised areas. Now it's time for some highlights with British Desert Pink, also from AK. Applied with the sponge just like before, but this time not going quite as heavy. Drying the sponge on my glove before applying it to the base. This is already looking pretty good, but it's not reading similar enough to the other knights. So I go back to the Desert Pink, using it through the airbrush to lighten things up a bit before using the brown ink and flow improver wash from before along with some skeleton hoard from GW to add some colour and definition. With this idea in mind, I grab some Mantis Warrior Green, also from GW, thinning this down directly on the base just to tint a few areas. I do the same with some Imperial Fists Yellow and my purple ink mix. Once dry, you can see that this has added some subtle natural colour variations to the base but we've lost some of those highlights. So I grab some Iraqi sand from Vallejo and sponge this on, focusing on the edges and the highest points. And although this is looking fine, and I'd be happy to work this up here for any individual piece, it's still not quite reading right to me when sat next to the other knights, as it's far too red. So I grab some yellow brown ink along with some flow improver, and give it a wash to tint it away from the red. Skeleton Horde from GW would work well here, but I prefer using artist inks when working on larger pieces, as they are infinitely less expensive. So you don't have to worry too much about how much you're using. Leaning towards that yellow tone, I grab some light stone from AK and use this through the airbrush to filter the whole piece, bringing up the lightness everywhere. Going back to the Iraqi sand, I do the same thing but focus more on the high points and larger rocks. I also use a little of the Iraqi sand and a sponge to pick out and enforce a few of the sharper details. Then it's back to adding in some colour, starting with the purple and browns, going back and forth between the washes and sponge highlights slowly building up natural colour variation and texture. Sponging on some bone white from Vallejo just to add some texture and lighten up the piece. Before using the Mantis Warrior Green again, a little darker green ink was used around the orc skull as if there's some orky fungus leaching out from it. This is now looking a lot closer to the other bases so I start working up the details and contrast going back in with green, yellow, purple and browns 
randomly and subtly tinting areas to add some further interest, using the purple ink to darken the deepest shadows and some of the ground cover, while also dry brushing with the light stone to retain some of that sharp detail. Again, going back and forth with the sponge and the dry brush, building up more texture. At this point, I think I may have gone a little too far with the tinting and texturing. So to smooth things out, I thinned some bone white from Vallejo and gently spray the areas that I want to brighten up. Going back again with the ink, sponge and dry brush in no particular order, just having fun, experimenting and building up interesting colors and textures. And it looks like we're about there. You could definitely give it a coat of matte varnish, glue on the mini and move on at this stage. But as always, I want to take things just a little further and continue experimenting. But happy with the overall big picture stuff, I now look to focus on the smaller details. Using the same inks, but with a much smaller brush, I work into some of the deeper recesses and details to add some more definition. With the same intent in mind, I highlight the sharpest edges with bone white, even adding a little texture here and there. This approach is a bit of a halfway house between army basing and competition basing, as you're still being quite precise with the final details, but have covered pretty much 90% of the piece with a sponge at speed. So don't feel too bad about spending a little extra time here if it's a character piece or you're simply just enjoying it. So after spending some time adding in details and painting the skull, essentially in the same way as the rocks but just taking the highlights a little higher adding skulls of your friends armies is a must here we're ready for a solid coat of matte varnish from AK. This knocks all the shine off, making the whole piece and all the different surface finishes read the same. Personally, I love this look. It also gives you the chance to create deliberate surface finish contrast with some gloss or satin varnishes, like standing water or blood splatter. It's also great for making any resin water effects stand out. But as this ground is intended to be relatively dry and rocky, I'm sticking with the matte coat. Once fully dry, we can get to the final details. And my my favourite part of basing. Tufts! Cutting small sections of many tuft colours, I go around the base, fixing them where I think they make the most sense. I even grab some mini leaves and a couple of small sticks for some extra texture. Real world references here could be quite useful if you're not sure. We're very close to finishing now, but to make sure the tufts, leaves and sticks all read as part of the base and don't stand out on their own too much, I give them a little hit of the inks that we've been using. This subtly tints them to match the surrounding rock and ground cover. I even touch some of the white flowers with the purple ink just to provide a little more variation and cohesion. Now on to potentially the most satisfying step of basing, the rimming. Mine's out of the gutter please. Of course we go with a nice smooth black. I will also accept a charcoal grey but you will be judged accordingly. There we have it. The base is ready for the mini and the tabletop. But as a very final step, I want to tie the mini to the base as it currently looks too stark and disconnected. So I mix up some deep brown from before with some flow improver, carefully washing it into the recesses of the feet and lower legs where dust would likely settle. I do the same with some desert pink, but restrict this to the deepest corners. And there we really have it. Something that isn't exactly the same as the other bases, but is more similar than it is different. As mentioned at the start, this process has been more of a journey than a recipe and I'd likely skip remove and refine the process for the next few bases using this video as a reference point to speed things along but I hope you found this useful as I want to demonstrate that you really don't need to be restricted by a recipe experimenting and changing things up as you go is perhaps a little more time consuming but for me at least it's a lot more fun and educational, particularly where it's on a base where you feel that you can try new things without much negative consequence. So I hope this has encouraged you to grab some bases and slap that paint around until it looks good. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. But until next time, bye.